I'm here today to do the Indigathon tag. Uh, this was created by Brody and Michelle, and I will link their um, channels down below and link to the original tag as well. And um, Indigathon is in the spirit of sharing Indigenous authors um, and the, in the United States, it, this month, November, is Native American History Month. And um, because I live in Canada, I um, read primarily Canadian-based Indigenous authors. So I'm going to be sharing some Canadian-based Indigenous authors today. And I'm sharing everything from nonfiction to fiction to poetry, because I read a lot of poetry as well. So question number one is, what is your favorite Native American authored book? And for this, I picked I Am a Body of Land by Shannon Webb Campbell. This book of poetry was my favorite book of poetry that I read in 2019, which was the year it was released. I heard an interview with Shannon Webb Campbell and Lee Miracle, who is a very prominent Indigenous author in Canada, um, a, a radio interview with, with them talking about this book and the process that Shannon Webb Campbell went through when she was writing it. And um, it has a very tumultuous story. Um, Shannon Webb Campbell wrote some poetry um, using the um, names of some of the murdered and missing Indigenous women in um, in her work and um when they were about to release that that um collection the families of those women objected to her using their stories and um so this was when um shannon went into consultation with lee miracle uh to re-look at the poetry collection, take out anything that was not her actual story, and to kind of look at how stories are told and what what ways we uh, can be appropriating stories um, in, in bad ways that don't reflect the wishes of family members. And so it was such an amazing interview. And Shannon read a couple of the poems from this collection and I immediately ordered it. It's probably the quickest book I've ever purchased in my life. And um, I love the poetry in here. Um, Shannon Webb Campbell covers a lot of uh, questions of um, space, of identity, because she herself comes from Indigenous and settler um, ancestry. And so she's exploring where she fits and how she can re-educate herself and connect to her roots and yet um and her and her own um is that authentic for her is that permissive all these types of things um this collection is just it's stunning and i still think about it quite a bit and would highly recommend um you check this out I made a video dedicated to this poetry collection uh, last year, and it ha includes some readings from several of the poems, so I will link that down below if you would like to check it out. Question number two is, which book do you find yourself recommending most often? And so for this one, I wanted to um, talk about two books, Monkey Beach by Eden Robinson and The Reconciliation Manifesto by Arthur Manuel. So Monkey Beach is a novel, um, written by Eden Robinson, and it has just been turned into a film, which is really exciting. I'm hoping to be able to watch that very soon. And it is set in a northern community in British Columbia, First Nations community, obviously, and um, it follows the story of a young woman coming of age and coming to terms with her place in her village, her place in her family, the the painful history of her family and it's also kind of an adventure story because her brother has gone missing and so her and her parents are are endeavoring to find out where he is and it's a wonderful exploration of um, life in this northern bc community and also of um you know breaking down barriers i think as well and stereotypes but also just relaying a normal life a normal relatable story and the second one is um 
the Reconciliation Manifesto by Arthur Manuel. And this is a wonderful piece of nonfiction, so important, so powerful. Arthur Manuel was an Indigenous activist um, and, and, you know, a freedom fighter in a lot of ways for his community. And um, this book is frank, it is um, straightforward, and it really breaks down the importance for, um, you know, eradicating a lot of the relationships that have been established thus far between um, the Canadian government and um, Indigenous peoples in Canada. And it really, you know, lays out, you know, the basics for what um, indigenous people need and deserve in order to just come to the table to talk. So it's a very, very powerful piece of writing. And I, again, still think about it all the time. I also just wanted to put in a caveat here that all this reading for me is really about um, educating myself as a settler Canadian. And um, there's this is a journey that I will be on for the rest of my life. There's really not going to be a time where I've read enough books to understand the Indigenous experience or to be able to relay the Indigenous experience. Um, I'm really just here as a student, as um, someone who wants to be in allyship and in um, a, a supporter of um, Indigenous self-rule, Indigenous self-determination, and um, wants to live here in this country where my ancestors came and settled with um, a broad and um, and supportive um, stance towards the issues that Indigenous people face uh, because of the col colonization of this country uh, by white people. And number three is what is a book that you picked up because of someone's recommendation? And for that one, I am going to talk about Disintegrate Dissociate by Ariel Twist. This was recommended to me by a Thunderbird Woman Reads, Danny, And this was before she had uh, her YouTube channel when she was um, had her just her Instagram. And so she now has a YouTube channel as well. So of course, I will link that down below. She is just a wonderful um, bookstagrammer, YouTuber, um, advocate for Indigenous rights and advocate for wonderful Indigenous reads. So if by some off chance you haven't heard of her before, please um, go give her channel a, a, a follow. This is also a book of poetry by Ariel Twist. Ariel Twist is a um, two-spirit trans amazing poet and um, this is just one of the most interesting and compelling books of poetry um, because her perspective is one that I don't think most people know about or understand and these poems are very raw they are very emotional and they're coming from a place of um, finding, looking for self and trying to find your place in the world. And um, so I think in a lot of ways, and they are so relatable that way. And um, yeah, this is just a really important book of poetry. And um, I think if you are looking for something intersectional, this is most definitely intersectional. Um, because Ariel herself is a trans woman and also because um, of her perspective as a trans indigenous woman. So definitely worth reading. Number four is what is the most recent book by a native author that you have read? And for that one, it is another book of poetry. This Wound is a World by Billy Ray Belcourt. Billy Ray Belcourt is a uh, indigenous scholar um, he is um, also writes intersectionally because he is a gay man and an Indigenous author. And so um, this book of poetry covers a lot of those issues that he faced as a gay man who feels a level of um, in exclusion from his own community based on the fact that he is gay. And so he covers a lot of those issues in this poetry collection. And it is, a you know, just a really compelling read. Um, that that really draws you in and keeps you there um, again showing you an experience that um, is is unique and um, authentic number five is what is the next book you are planning to read and for that it is a book off of my um, tbr for indigathon and that's celia's song by lee miracle 
Um, as I said in my TBR video, I have not read any Lee Miracle yet. She is a prolific, profound writer in the Canadian Indigenous um, literature scene, writing everything from, um, you know, uh, fiction to nonfiction. And so really, really looking forward to delving into this book, which is... Um, So this book is set um, on BC's coast in the new Chelnuth territory. And um, it's kind of got some magical realism and um, I'm really looking forward to getting sucked up into this story soon. Number six is, are there still some 2020 releases that you want to get to? And I would say that the most recent 2020 release that I um, just found out about a few days ago was Warrior Life by Pamela Palmer, and Pamela Palmer is a lawyer and an activist and a very prominent um, indigenous um, indigenous activist living on the east coast of Canada. Uh, she's Mi'kmaqian, and she just released this book this year. Um, I think it just came out in October, and it is about um, contains all of her writing. So she has a podcast. She um, is a very wonderful speaker, and she has a lot of writings about anti-racist work, um, anti-colonialism, um, the sexual violence against Indigenous women, and um, just basic, you know, Indigenous rights across um, across Canada, but also specifically to her region. And so I'm very excited to delve into this, to um, get a kind of um, other side of Canada perspective, because a lot of the books that I've been reading are based in BC. And I'd like something, you know, that covers a wide range of area. So uh, very looking forward to um, getting to that soon. And I just wanted to share with you um, the t-shirt that I'm wearing today uh, is the Orange Shirt Day, uh, Every Child Matters shirt. And Orange Shirt Day was begun, um, is held on September 30th each year in Canada. And um, it was initiated by Phyllis Jack Webstad's story of her uh, first day going to um, residential school. And on that day, her mother had purchased her a new shirt um, in kind of the spirit of... Um, excitement of being able to go somewhere new and experience something new and when Phyllis arrived at school um, she was told to take off all her clothing and put on the uniform and um, this is this story has come to be a representation of the horrors of residential school and how they impacted culturally emotionally physically um, the indigenous experience in this country and so this these shirts are designed by the orangeshirtday.org um, organization and each year they come out with a new design and these designs are um, done by indigenous designers and uh, this is really about raising awareness um, it's especially an initiative in schools but people across the province participate and it's really about raising awareness engaging in, in um, dialogue and um, acknowledging the pain and the horror that was inflicted through these institutional schools um, for way too long in Canada. So thank you very much for watching this video today. Like I said before, um, educating yourself and reading Indigenous literature is such an important initiative in so many ways and keeping your bookshelf diverse is is not just about um, lip service but it's also about um, expanding your mind and and um, expanding your empathy and making you become an active participant in the change that this world needs to see so thank you very much for watching and i'll be back again soon with another video